the street. Usually the tunnels get kind of, uh, kind of connected with, uh, with piracy, with uh, people being abducted and taken out on ships. But the one at Candler is dramatic because that's the only one I've heard about connecting to the yellow fever. I, I, uh, I don't understand why they would dig it in the first place on the outskirts of town if they weren't trying to hide or cover up something. And it's, and it's, uh, and it's pretty well known, I think, that they were trying to hide the, uh, the death toll of yellow fever because they didn't want the public to panic. When it comes to the tunnels, there's a fascination with tunnels. Like you said, you can hardly mention yellow fever without that topic coming up. And it makes a lot of sense when you consider the mindset of the day. Again, um, Charles Darwin had just recently written The Origin of Species. We're talking Victorian era now. We're starting to question God and so many other things in, in society. We're pondering mysteries. Um, it, it, it's, you, you can scarcely resist the temptation to think that there are these mysterious dark passages running right beneath our feet. We can't see them, but they're there every day. We're over them every day. Um, that seems like a very, very Victorian era thing to embrace. It would appear that enough evidence exists to satisfy all but conspiracy theorists and historical detectives. So why does the legend persist? Whether they are real or not, why do stories of yellow fever tunnels continue to be passed from generation to generation in Savannah? Because we savor mystery. You know, we, we, we like to think that there's something more to the world than what's right in front of our eyes. And is it the having or the getting? You know, do you really want to know or do you want to just long for it and, and, and savor that? That's a good question. Um, it certainly makes, uh, certainly makes for better storytelling if we don't really know. Once we find the, once we find the answer, the mystery's dead, it's gone.